I think blue pill is what they call like the SJWs and like the. No, that's not true. People that have been following the red pill stuff for a while mm -hmm. disown them. Cause you're not supposed to like, it's like a very slippery slope. Most of them are actually more liberal. I no, there's almost nothing you can say to convince me of that, but okay. I, <laughs> the, the answer has to be yes. What do you mean? Like our genes and our ancestors? Well, some people, some people don't think so. There are people that like think well, that it's I don't know what you're asking me. Are you asking me like are black people and white people different because of our ancestors? Or are you asking me like do genes influence no. our thoughts? Or like, well, yeah, what were you asking no, me? I'm, no, I'm not. Asking. What are you talking? Why did you just make this about race? Well, I don't know. Cause no, wait, it I'm, seems like you're asking me a pretty okay, no, common sense question. Like, yeah, our ancestors, fine, of course, fine. influence us like genetically. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Right. That The answer can only be yes to that. Right. No, that's not true. Oh, OK. Well, if somebody said no to that, so, I would assume. Oh yeah. Hi guys. My name's Tori. I've stalked like a lot of your videos, so I'm pretty familiar with your audience. They're really cool. Please don't come for my ass, please. I can't handle it right now. Okay. I'm an, I'm an agreeable bitch. Oops. Okay. Sounds a little traumatized, but I, all right. Does it really? Yeah, I'll tell my bit. dad. Okay. I'm just kidding. Um, what do you call it? I make red pill content. Cringe. Don't leave yet. <laughs> You're good, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking to your audience, trying to build a connection. Okay. Duh. Keep building. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, I was telling Destiny when I reached out to him that I'm willing to change my opinion. So just saying, we're not that hardcore over here. But I wanted to ask him about why he thinks Red Pill tells men, one, not to cry or have any emotion. But more specifically, I didn't add this, but I'll add it now. Just what you hate about the red pill. Why you think it's so problematic. Um, um, go ahead. No, that's really it. Okay, so let me start off by saying that red pill and manosphere. Also, if my eye looks weird, it's because I've got a f sty that is blocking my eye. I didn't get beat up and I don't have any weird shit going on just as a heads up, okay? But, it doesn't look weird. Okay, well, no, I shouldn't have said anything, so fuck me. Okay. Um, Red pill manosphere are all like very, very broad things. So be aware that if I say one thing, it's probably something I've heard from like that Rolo Tomasi guy, the Donovan dude, the fresh and fit guys. So that's like the world that I'm kind of in as part of like the red pill. Okay. Stuff. Yeah. So there might be other people that say different things, but this is what I've heard. Okay. So in regard mm -hmm. specifically to that thing you spoke about for our teach men to be emotionless or whatever, one thing that I've heard repeated over and over and over again from all of the guys that have gone on Fresh and Fit, from Fresh and Fit themselves, and anybody that's like adjacent in this space, is this idea- I already know what you're gonna say. Yeah, it's the idea that like, if you show <laughs> any emotion to a woman, there's a chance she's gonna leave you. And I just think that's the most profoundly retarded statement I've ever heard in my entire life. I agree with you. Okay. Um, Keep going. I'm just taking notes, cause I had an accident, so I don't wanna forget and put words in your mouth. So keep going. You're, sure what, you like a more. concussion? What do you mean an accident? I had, I had a double concussion actually, but it was a seizure. So it, I used to be on to be, I already told you, this isn't a debate. I'm just trying sure. to get information. Okay, but, well, I was making a joke um, and now you made me feel bad. So, okay, you had a double concussion. Don't feel gotcha. bad, it's funny. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's funny. Okay. But yeah, so I'm just gonna make sure that I take notes or else everybody will come for me in the comments. So gotcha. that's okay. if you hear me typing, keep going. No problem. What else do you hear? Um, let's see. That's a really big one. Um, I hear this. I hear people on the on the red pill side make the same mistake that I think people on the like blue pill side made, where it felt like the blue pill people were really um, <laughs> they were really anxious to label every masculine trait as like toxic 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 that's toxic whatever and it was really cringe but then it feels like for the red pill guys like the blue pill people do make some good suggestions like men do need to be more emotionally intelligent and available to their partners like that's just a fact okay 100 percent true but like red pill people will take that as like women don't want any type of emotion from men and men don't need to fulfill those roles in a, in a relationship they're only there for resources and i think that that framing is also like really mm -hmm. shitty and stupid and toxic yeah Okay, can I clarify something? When you say blue pill people, it's just, I've never, I don't like red pill as like um, an adjective. Will you just, blue pill, I'm assuming everybody else? I think blue is, pill is what they call like the SJWs and like the... No, that's not true. <sighs> blue pill is like people that are um, like, it's just the opposite. It's like kind of diluted, but I wouldn't say that's SJWs. 
Well, that, I that's think like more so like politics. Sure, but I think like largely speaking, like the super progressive SJW people that like you know hashtag believe all women and toxic masculinity and pro feminism and blah blah blah. Those are like larger like mm -hmm. blue pill ideas. Like they come from there. Maybe the blue pill. I don't. But yeah, I think that's just it though, because I don't think there's an actual like blue pill dating community. Is there? It would just be like Matthew Hussey. Okay, I don't you even know, know like that is, your general, yeah, just like <laughs> general dating. Um, but they call SJWs SJWs. Okay. Just wanna, well, wouldn't they yeah, say SJWs but, um, are blue pill? I feel like they'd say that. Honestly, there's some idiots in the sphere, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just like to lump everybody in one category. You okay. know. Gotcha. All right. Well. Yeah. Um, Keep going. I sorry. I just want they'll come for me if I don't clarify that. Sure. I mean, I would, Fun. I would, I would work around those two. Those would be the two starting points I'd give. Yeah. Okay. So you said something on the stream with Angry Man. I'm not familiar with him, but I did see it. And you were saying that men, and then just now you said the thing about showing the emotion. But you said that men can't cry, or she's going to leave you. Right? I didn't say cry. I said show emotion. But sure, we can say cry if you want. I don't like that, like, okay. every time I talk about showing emotion, like, the red pill thing is like, oh, you can't be, like, a blubbering, pathetic f***ing loser. In front of you. It's like, well, if you're going to do that, <laughs> nobody's going to like you, of course. But that's not necessarily what I'm talking about, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> don't think that I'm, like, trying to put words in your mouth. I just suck at talking right now, to be no, honest with you. You're good. But, no okay, so show any emotion. So, like, stoicism. Yeah. That, it depends on if you're trying to build a relationship or if you're just trying to sleep with a woman, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Maybe. but there's a lot in the red pill that teaches men how to like access their emotions and really understand them. Is there? But you probably didn't know. Yeah, there is. I promise you. Okay. I'd never so, hear any of it ever, but yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we got to refute their bullshit. They put out some pretty bad shit. So that's why I wanted to have you on. Um, guys, I'll read the super chats in a minute. Um, what was the second thing? Sorry. Um, just the general idea smooth. that like a man's job in a relationship is just to provide resources. Like, yeah. Mm. Like, so any That's type of like, true. so when you're talking about like improving your standing in relationships or like getting women like successfully into relationships, mm -hmm. the only framing is usually around providing resources. So basically like upping your money, maybe upping your gym and you know, how you look. But like generally it's all focused on that like that resource analysis basically so for relationships right well i say that kind of well, maybe it's for hooking up it feels like red pill guys don't actually talk about relationships that much they'll always say like they do okay well i hear them use dating sex and hookups i, he I hear all three of those used interchangeably so i don't know which uh -huh. advice is supposed to apply to relationships or not it's very hard to tell but i feel like i don't hear them talk about maintaining healthy relationships almost ever it seems like it's almost always revolving around how to fuck a lot of women basically but interesting mm -hmm. i kind of agree with you though I definitely the stuff that gets pushed out a lot is kind of what we would call red meat and it's like clickbait just okay. like red pill-esque sure. um but no men are not just supposed to be providers i would say that i i think a man can be in either role it just depends on his relationship whether he wants to be a stay-at-home dad um just out of curiosity, this is random. Sorry, I'm tangential. No, you're Try good. to follow. <laughs> but um, do you think that red pill folks follow some sort of political um, affiliation or whatever? Um, do you think they're like yeah. predominantly right wing? Yeah, for sure. Left? Yeah. Probably going to be predominantly right wing. So anybody that ever talks about politics and red pill like people that have been following the red pill stuff for a while mm -hmm. disown them because you're not supposed to like it's like a very slippery slope most of them are actually more liberal i no, there's almost nothing you can say to convince me of that but okay i uh, that's fine that's fine or I'm if they, if they are faith, no no I yeah promise. i know i know but like if, if they are liberal they're the kind of liberals that are like oh yeah like i'm kind of like i'll decide who i want to support you know i'm not sure i can go either way but then when you look at like their twitter feeds the way they talk it's like relentlessly talking about how <laughs> hilarious trump is and he's actually so funny for owning the libs and biden is a huge cuck who might have alzheimer's but like i'm kind of a centrist so i'll go either way but everybody that identifies that way always, always falls like saying. super far right yeah maybe i i should have used the term progressive 
Yeah, progressive is very it, far left. They, they, none of them are progressive. Or do, are you saying they are? Yeah, they are. No, shot. they are. They're, and no. I'll, I'll explain. Go, go I'll ahead, explain yeah. why. Okay. Um. So, we actually, I say we, but mm-hmm. people that have been, have like a red pill awareness, whatever you want to call it, they understand that you cannot go back to traditional values. So what you're referring to is like incels. Okay. I hope that made sense. So like, I feel like all the red pills I talk to always talk about like return to tradition kind of in terms of like, this is what men do. This is what men are. This is what we talk about Evo psych all the time and shit. Isn't it a bitch when people misrepresent some shit? Well, sure. But what if everybody's misrepresenting it at some point, you're like, no true Scotsmaning me. Like if all the red pill people I talked to are saying this, <laughs> then, I mean, what am I supposed List to do? off. Uh, awesome. Fresh and fit, the Rolo Tomasi guy, uh, that angry I man. I know for a fact. Yeah. I know for a fact, Rolo Tomasi and Fresh and Fit don't. Fresh and Fit, though, I will say their after hour show does have a lot of red meat in it, but that's also because that's the most. When it comes to talking to women, it gets the most, not only the most shock factor, but it gets to like the heart of the issue the quickest. And I know it's like, why are you talking to women that way? But that's how they'll get the response from them. It's entertainment more so than I would say anything else. I feel and like women when I, end up co- go ahead. I was gonna say I feel like when Sorry. I listen to them talk, like the appeal mm-hmm. doesn't ever seem to be like adapting to today's environments. The appeal seems to be like returning to traditional lost masculinity. Like all the okay. advice that they give is stuff that would have worked, you know, in the 1900s. Or like so the, yeah, go ahead. that's when you, that's when you have to ask: Do they follow a religion? Because red pill's not an ideology. It's not like this set in stone thing. Like a lot of people will have different religions in it. So like I know for my dogs, okay, <laughs> I have two Dalmatians. It's chaos in here. Um, but like I know for a fact, Myron is more like he follows Islam, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if he um, actually does. I know a lot of them say they're religious, but I don't believe any of the red pillars are religious. I think a lot of them wear it as an aesthetic, but. Uh, no, you just have to learn to like separate it. And it's hard because people keep spewing red pill as an ideology. And I think that's where a lot of misrepresentation comes from. Well, I mean, it kind of is an ideology, no? No, I don't, I wouldn't say it is at all, actually. You've probably, low okay, I know. I feel like red just pill like implies a whole bunch about your view of the world. That if somebody tells me they're red pill, there's a bunch of like assumptions I can make about their beliefs of the world, and I'll probably be correct um, on some things 90% of the time. On other things, probably like 60 to 75% of the things of the time. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You can, I could, I would definitely like the first time I came into the content, it seemed like I was talking to people on the alt right. I wouldn't say that, but like here, so here are some general statements. Some of it, some of them might be, but some of it was crazy. Here, here are some things I would say in general, right? I would guess that probably 75 plus percent of like um, red pill people think that the new mRNA vaccines are some kind of like bad scam evil thing that like causes harm. I'd say probably (laughs) 75 plus percent. Um, I would say probably 50 plus percent um, regularly use words like World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, or you'll own nothing and rent everything and be happy. Like th- these kinds of like globalist ideas. I would say 80 plus percent were either Trump vo- voters or Trump supporters. Um, I would say probably 80 plus percent regularly attack or shit on Biden or the establishment. I'd say that like 80 plus percent probably have a very negative uh, view of feminists. Um, I would say like probably 70% plus have really negative views of trans people. I'd say 60% plus have really negative views of gay people. Like I think that these generalizations are probably about correct. If I, if you saw polling data, I'd be probably true. Definitely when you started with like the conspiratorial, like MRNA, mm-hmm. that in and of itself could certainly class people together. I noticed that when people have a tendency to lean towards that, I could also say that they're probably right wing. Mm -hmm. They're probably, yeah, like I I agree with what you're saying, but in terms of like the actual red pill itself, it has nothing to do with your political stance. It has nothing to do with religion. The only thing it has to do with is like, here's some stuff that we have seen kind of aligns with female or male behavior do what you see fit that's it it's not like like people that turn it into this whole like Mm -hmm. oh 
so and so told me never to fuck a bitch with tattoos or never fuck a bitch with blue hair mm -hmm. like that's that's like the extreme that takes it out of context group of people and the only thing we can do is kind of say how crazy they are and then people think that we're crazy for calling them crazy Does that make sense? yeah i mean yeah you can say that but i mean at some point like like if everybody what? on that side seems to be like ubiquitously coming out with these messages, I'm probably just going to assume well, that you like, said, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say everybody, that's hyperbolic. But when like, it feels like all of the large content creators are pretty lockstep with this type of messaging, then I'm probably going to say like, yeah, this is what quote unquote red pillars believe, like, because it seems well, to be you the said, case. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I understand. But you said fresh and fit specifically, mm -hmm. but like, I know for a fact, Rolo Tomasi does not push that kind of stuff. Um, okay, I guess I'd have to dig more deeply, but he's contradicted me on almost on so many different things that I've said, and I've watched his stream before, and it seems like he's pretty locked up with the fresh and fit guys. Um, I don't think I've ever heard him push back on anything they've said or contradicted, so I assume that their views are going to line up like 95% of the time. Um, uh uh. Okay. No, you could. Uh, I, I don't think it matters. Everybody that I've met has different. Like I said, a lot of them are progressive. Other than if they follow a religion, maybe they'll have old order thinking is what we call it, archaic views, in my personal opinion. I'll call them out and just say it's archaic as fuck. What do you think? Um, um, other than that. What do you think yeah, go ahead. for the Rolo Tomasi guy? Like, what do you think he doesn't believe that I've unfairly ascribed to him? Can you rephrase that? What do you think I've said that like Rolo probably believes this and you're like, oh, no, no, no. Rolo doesn't believe that. I'm curious. Like my like if I had to make assumptions about it, he's probably uh, like super pro Trump, super anti or anti to neutral <laughs> on the vax, um, believes like globalist shit, is trying to make men weak, like all of that. That'd be like my guess. Do, are there some of these things that he doesn't believe or Um, I would say that like like can we turn it on women for a second? Because I don't know if I know I don't wanna say for sure, but mm -hmm. and I don't know if he wants me to put stuff like that out there, but I'm just for the sake of it, I'll talk about women specifically because I know the red pill shits on women, whatever. Okay. For women, a lot of people that have big platforms will say women should not have the right to vote. Okay. Have you heard that before? Yeah, I think, yeah. Like me and Rolo are really big on saying that's uh, voter fraud. Um, that won't happen and we actually do want women to be voting. Sure, so although like I would a, say that's an extreme big... view that I don't know any mainstream red pillars that put out that view. That's pretty right. extreme, I think, but. Well, have you ever heard that like women make up m most of um, voting polls or whatever and it's like mostly Democrats? Um, like yeah, that? I've kind of heard that before. People will allude to like, um, uh, like voter demographics as being an important reason why Democrats win and shit, yeah. Yeah, and so the whenever they're talking about it, they're like, we should just repeal the 19th mm -hmm. or whatever the fucking... Yeah, that seems say. to... And again, that's just my personal experience, so it could be different, but that seems to me that that comes from, like, the black pill people. Like, there is a guy called... Is it Pigeon Speaks or Sparrow Speaks? I'm not trying to fuck names up. I generally don't. I just don't remember. I have no idea. Who sure, that but that is. was a guy that I spoke to on a show before, and I think that like people like that, or there's one guy who's like Avatar is like anime pillows. He has sex with. I'm not trying to shit on anybody. I think that's generally <laughs> what he is. Um, it's okay. Okay. People yeah. have their thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't judge. <laughs> um, yeah, they might be hot anime pillows. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, when I hear stuff like that, my assumption is um. Or, or I'm sorry, when I hear like the, about the women shouldn't vote thing, usually that's like the mega incels. That's not like the mainstream. Like I don't think Fresh and Fit even would ever say anything like women shouldn't vote. Uh, they've jokingly said it, I think, just to get a point across about how women end up wanting to set up uh, the communities, or not the community, like their state in mm -hmm. a communitarian way and not like sure. a patriarchal way. I know that that's like a trigger word for some people. But when I mm -hmm. say patriarchal, I just mean a man in charge. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's all I mean. Yeah. I'm not saying one is better or worse. I genuinely don't even know. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you. Sure. S Sweden seems to be doing well or Norway. Yeah. But they, I mean, like usually when those people say it, it's jokes, right? Like everybody in my chat is spamming the just Pearl thing um, that Pearl thinks that like women should be able to vote. That's not true. She was making a point about like women, um, like not being in the draft, but still being able to vote like shit like that. Basically. I don't know. Well, if she... actually, Pearl, Pearl was pushing it for a while. I mean, yeah, but was her, she pushing it or was that like yeah. her edgy thought? Like, did she genuinely think women shouldn't vote or did she think that women should just have more responsibility in society if they're going to vote? 
Because I, I think later, uh -huh. later she was like, oh, okay, selective service. But I don't think for a while it didn't seem like that's what she was pushing. Oh, okay, but I might have missed like, that. I, I mean, it makes. I mean, when you look at the logic and you're just like, okay, let's. I'm just pulling numbers. I genuinely don't know, but let's just say more than sixty percent are Democrats. It's mm -hmm. like if you're a right wing person, take away women's right to vote because they make up most of the Democratic Party, and then boom, we win. That's sure. the logic that I saw, and I was like, well, that's voter fraud. Sure. Um, we should educate women if that's what you want to do first, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just think that. Uh, low okay, relax like the whole selective service thing it's like okay but we haven't been drafted in a while so mm -hmm. in the same time equal responsibility fine whatever low okay, is mad so sorry you're good no she was genuinely pushing it yeah i see okay if she was i just didn't hear it i just i only heard her use it in a reference to that selective service thing but yeah what other stuff um, what other stuff about what? I don't know. Is there any, like, low high relax? Is there any other stuff that you hear about Red Pill that you're like, this is problematic? In terms of, like, I don't know, relationships, let's go. You say you only hear about them, get your money up, fuck a bunch of bitches. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't usually hear them talk about relationships ever. Um when I'm on shows, it feels like they all conflate. I say they all. I should really say Fresh and Fit. And maybe, um, I don't know if I've talked Red Pill stuff actually with Pearly things, but like Fresh and Fit, Sneeko. Like it feels like they use sex and relationships interchangeably. And they never like talk mm -hmm. like, but they'll even say like, oh, like if you want relationships, like it's really important to, um, um, and then they'll start giving advice on like how to like hook up with girls or whatever. Um, and, they, and they use that. Or they talk about how women date hypergamously a lot. They'll say that. And that doesn't even make sense. You can't date hypergamously. You could fuck hypergamously. <laughs> but like one guy is well, not. Well, 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 it depends. It does Some people don't even believe in hypergamy. That's just to date up and across the hierarchies. Um, That's all it is. Sure. Well, but but usually it's used in the context of the fresh and fit guys. It's used to argue the uh, like that 80-20 thing that. 80% of guys are getting, or I'm sorry, that 20% of guys are getting 80% of women, which from a, from a sex that, thing, I don't even know if that's true, wait, but from wait, a dating wait. thing, it's absolutely not true. Yeah, go ahead. It's actually, a lot of people fuck this up. Low Kai, red lax. Um, it's actually 100% of women want 20% of guys. It's not that they're actually fucking them. Okay, but sure. They want. I don't even know if that's true. Which but that, makes but, sense. Usually when Think it's framed, it. it's usually that 20% of guys are fucking 80% of women. When I've been on shows, that's what's always been presented to me. That And then they use the example of like Tinder matches and like top guys at schools, mm -hmm. like jocks fucking all the women or whatever. That's usually the context is brought up in. But. but think about that for a second. Is that realistic that every single woman that has an issue with a guy, it has to, they're all, it's all the 20%. It doesn't even make sense mathematically. Don't talk to me about that. Talk to them. When I was on their show last, I asked them what percentage of college women do they think are getting flown out to Dubai to fuck? And Fresh said it was 30, 40, or 50 percent of college girls are getting flown out to Dubai. So <laughs> I know the numbers don't work, of course. Okay. I just, I'm glad you know, because it's just, that sounds like it's just misrepresentation. And as far as like the data studies go, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people get uh, the okay cupid ones yeah is that the one you're talking about that's Data usually people will talk about that from like fucking 1997 or some shit or not not that old but like it's a pretty old uh, one it what they redid it though so it's still the same what it gets really uh misrepresented as well because it's like pretty much tldr too long didn't read it whatever it's like men were asked which women they found the most attractive so sure. it was like a survey they would just show different pictures of women across all ages and then they found that men are most attractive to women at 22 but who they message mm -hmm. is about is really close to their age so they always leave out that part sure. so that, like women assume that these men are just messaging 22 year olds and the ones that they do if they do this was like another caveat or mm -hmm. whatever you call it it was like they don't respond okay. so it was like that's it gets misread a lot sure. so men aren't messaging 22 year olds they're just attracted to them okay sure you understand yeah yeah 
Yeah, a lot of those um, people will boil down some of those studies like single numbers to like make very, very far reaching conclusions about society. Like there's the one that gets talked about how like men tend to rate women more evenly on an appearance curve, whereas women are judge a bit more harshly. But people will extrapolate out from that that like women only want to date the top 5% of like six foot or taller guys or whatever. Like that, that goes from there to there. And I don't think that that jump is warranted or I think you need to build up to that a little bit more. So in terms of like dad bod, is that what you're kind of alluding to? Like, um, Well, no, what I'm alluding to is that there are a couple other plausible explanations. I don't know what the actual explanation is, but like, for instance, it might be the fact that women are just more attractive in general than men. And that's why they're rated more highly because appearance and stuff is something that women focus on more. And it might oh. also be that women will rate more harshly on appearance, but appearance might not be a primary selector for what a woman is going for on a dating app. Right, she might say like, "Oh yeah, like this guy's a nine, this guy's a nine. A lot of these guys are kind of like, oh, you know, fives or sixes. But like a lot of them are like, "Oh yeah, if, if the guy's cool, he's funny, he makes me laugh, he's got money, like five or six is fine. Like, that could be the case, right? But people will cite that one difference in appearance rating and say, "Oh, this is why women only want to date the top one percent or whatever, or six foot, you know, giga sheds." Well, the top one percent doesn't necessarily mean that you're good looking. Sure, it could be in money, it could be in status, it could be in wealth. It it's could be probably in money. It's when I hear that because like most good looking guys are broke. That's why bitches be mad about it. You know, they're fucking a guy that has no career, but he's good looking. Sure. Never yeah, I think that, that I think that can happen for sure. But I mean, like that, what you just said doesn't exist in some red pillars paradigms. They'll say that like that's impossible or something for some reason. Uh, incels, probably. Well, okay. I mean, if you want to call fresh and fit incels, Rolo might say some of this shit no, too, okay? No, 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 no. Fresh and fit don't say that stuff. Fresh and fit will cite the studies. And from my knowledge, it just, it's a wow factor, but they're not necessarily wrong. And if anything, I see Myron correcting it a lot of the time. I actually don't know if I agree with you when you say that they say certain stuff. Well, if you ever want to pull up a clip of me arguing their show, because that's usually where most of our disagreements come from, is from my arguments I've had with them. But I feel like, um, do you I know wanted... who, oh God. No, go ahead. I was going to ask, you know who Sorry. playing with fire is, the Alex guy? Don't apologize. Yeah. No, I talk over people, so. No, that's fine. Sorry. Do it. Fuck. That's <laughs> sometimes you gotta make people listen. Um, but I was gonna say that's a guy that is very much like he's like the he's in the pickup artist community. I don't think he's red pill. So and I hear no, him. not at all. Yeah, I hear him talk a lot about how like they say this. So like he's got a big focus on like game and like charisma and picking up girls that way. And from what he tells me, it seems like he stands in stark contrast to the red pill community that thinks that stuff like game and all of that is like it's kind of helps, but not as much as things like wealth and status seems to be the case. That's what he tells me at least. And then that seems to be what I get from their shows, but. Yeah, I'm not really familiar other than the fact that Alex read the fucking books. <laughs> I know he's watching this right now. Okay. I'm supposed to go on his show as after this. Me and Alex have gone head to head. He agree. I think he agrees with hypergamy or he doesn't. I don't even remember. Well, those are two opposite positions, so it's probably one or the other, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't know, but. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't know. I forgot what I was gonna say before though. It was oh, men and women. The, every time, okay. Every time that I see you on Fresh and Fit, it mm -hmm. always comes down to men and women being different. Do you agree that men and women are fundamentally different, or like? I think that men and women are fundamentally different, but we have more in common than we do in difference. If that makes sense. Like there I are gonna would, be. Yeah, I go would ahead. agree. Okay. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. I think we all agree on that, to be okay. honest with I you. I don't know if we all agree on that. I'm not sure about that. You're going to say they do, but no. I don't think they do. I think they would say, no, women are substantially, like significantly different from men. I mean, look at like one of Myron's favorite sayings, men have to become something, women just are, right? Or women hunt for resources and, and the way that they fuck is different. That's why one-sided open relationships are good. Men can fuck a lot of people, but if a woman fucks somebody else, she's cheating on you, but it's not the same for a man. I think they think there are big like divides between men and women. That's my feeling. Again, religion. What about religion? What? You see, you, you see where like religion comes in? Yeah, no. because. They justify this with like Evo Psych wives. and how they. Four wives. Yeah, no, no, four no. Wives. It's not about four wives though. They justify this with the differences between men and women. They never use a religious argument here. They say that but man. Because they'll always say like. On, let me oh, just... God. Yeah, go. Sorry, I just want to clarify because maybe I'm misinterpreting what you're saying. But to say that they go um, and say you can open on my end close on yours or something mm -hmm. that's what they say when it comes to sex mm -hmm. again my myron's religion and that align but that's not what red pills about sure but they don't you see say what I'm saying? 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, this is just what I hear from all of them, but maybe it's different between some of them. I don't know. None of them seem to contradict him on that. I've never heard that. But his justification for that isn't a religious one. His justification for that is the fundamental differences between male and female reproductive strategy. That's what he'll say. Well, I would say that we do have uh, different mating strategies for sure, but I, I'm not somebody that will promote uh, harems. <laughs> like sure. men, but they seem to make it... Given... Go ahead. So... Men, if given the chance, I think would have multiple wives, regardless of religion. But I don't think that society has anything in place that would promote that. Because the way that they see it is like women have these things in place. Have you ever heard of like gynocentrism? I mean, I can guess what it means, but yeah, the opposite of patriarchy or something or what? Kind of, yeah, but more so like all the ads and commercialized stuff is also kind of incentivizing women to be single and childless. Oh, gotcha. Okay. My dog is so bad right now. Hold on. What's wrong? Maybe he just wants some hugs. Um, he just needs some pets. No, she's just being a bitch. No, oh. we're going to go out. I promise, baby. We were waiting for you. Now you got my dog's crying. Okay, listen. Yeah, I don't fucking check my phone. Right, okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, but anyways. Um, so... I was saying before it with the harems or whatever, Mm -hmm. like maybe I should let her out for a second. Hold on. Yeah, go for it. Let me let her out. Talk to my audience. Okay. Yeah. Say things. Hold on. All right, guys. What's up? How are you guys doing? From Portia's stream. You guys ever play Factorio? <laughs> Shit. Okay, never mind. She's back. Okay, I'm here. What are they saying in the chat? <laughs> Nothing. They're are they being, mean? being shy. They're being mean? No, they're being shy. They're shy? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Not very red pill of them. <laughs> yeah. Berate me. What the fuck? Okay. So anyways. Mm-hmm. So whenever you see them promoting this like four wives thing i would encourage you to be like what religion do they align with whether they fucking practice it or not i mean i understand what you're saying but i mean like they the the justifications they give aren't religious ones like they appeal to like the psychology and shit when they give these relationship takes so so my whole thing i know i was talking about i want to make sure i stay i know i'm going all over the place i remember i said something Mm -hmm. about gynocentrism so like in a perfect world to me Mm -hmm. is a place where both men and women could optimize their mating strategy cringe i hate that i hate that word okay it's just so fringy but that's good we're talking about females and how they yeah go ahead like a fucking science I actually don't I, I don't mind female as much as I mind mating stri- like as if we're aware of what we do but anyway so mm-hmm. like in a world where both sexes could optimize there so like right now we live in a world where getting married to one person is the ideal and if you see a man mm-hmm. that leaves his older wife for a younger woman he's shamed mm-hmm. you notice that right yeah or like um like oh he's dating a woman that's six years below him again it's age a lot of the time but like men typically like younger women to have sex with i don't necessarily agree for a long-term partner but like in let's say a world where both men and women could optimize their mating strategies like that wouldn't be shamed for like a guy doing that obviously mm-hmm. within legalities you know sure. like I, mean, I think i feel like 18. i feel like for some of the sexual strategies it's hard to know what comes from our socialization versus what comes from mm-hmm. like our innate feelings too right 
So like for instance, it's very easy to make a whole bunch of stories about like, well, women um, don't want to sleep around because it's not good for identity of the baby or securing a male or blah, 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 blah. We, like we can like go back and kind of like make those stories up to fit what we think is true. But like, it could also be the sure. case that women are heavily disincentivized from mating with multiple men because socially like we punish the fuck out of it, right? Like that could I just could be the answer. Yeah. And it might be like in another society, maybe women are just as promiscuous as men, or maybe they get like closer to it if they don't get like, uh, you know, shamed as much for sleeping around. Like that could be the case. I don't know what the answer to that is, but. So have you ever heard of like blank slate equalism? Um, no, but I'm, is this something that says that like the gender start off the same and then they're socialized and that's where the differences come from? Kind of. Okay, go Pull it me. up. Take oh your time. Oh my God, you're gonna make me Google shit? Yeah, cause I don't wanna, yeah. Blank slate. Cause if slate, I just have. What's it called? Blank slate theory or equalism. Because this is something slide. that I find. Okay. Yeah, this is something that I find um, when talking about men and women. Mm -hmm. This is like it always comes back to this because, like, what you're saying is that women should, or not should, but I hate that word too. But like, women have this possible. They want to sleep around. Like, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We just keep pushing that they shouldn't, or else they're three hundred fours or whatever the fuck. But when you look at, like. Oh no, my dog now wants to come back in. Hold on, hold on. Take your time to read it. Also look up uh, Steven Pinker with um, the author. newborns gotcha. or something. Okay. A scientist, neuro-linguistic guy, I don't know. Okay, gotcha. Okay, guys. You still fighting Nick for Sneeko's soul? I don't know what Sneeko and Nick are doing right now, okay? Those two are both, I think, it feels like, and I could be wrong, I don't have the sick insider deets, but it feels like Ye is done with his shit. Didn't I say it would happen in like a month or two? Did it happen even sooner? Because Nick said he's going back to streaming regularly. I haven't seen any announcements from either of them relating to Kanye's shit. Do you think do you think Kanye is done with his stuff? Yeah, I saw that Kanye got married. <laughs> yikes. Are you reading it? Um, I read the whole book. Why yeah. did you say yikes? Um we were talking about Kanye West. Basically everything with Ye is big yikes, but Oh. Is it? Did you not read the thing I asked you? Well, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, this blank slate thing. Yeah, so it says the, it has blank slate, the modern denial of human nature. So my guess that's is going to be that. That's what came up? Well, that's the name of the book. That's what came up for you? That's the name of the book. Hold on. Don't be disingenuous. Hold on. Wait, that's the name of the book. Don't. The Steven Pinker book, right? The blank slate, the modern denial of human nature. Yeah, is but a, the, way that, the way that you say it, just. Uh, that's his title. <laughs> don't worry. I'll, don't worry, guys. I'll carry this team. What he found in his study with newborns was that newborns. I always fuck this up, forgive me. Just if you wanna Google it, newborn Steven Pinker. But mm -hmm. pretty much he noticed that within newborns, they could pick up on different facial expressions amongst, it doesn't matter the gender, like okay. this isn't about gender right now. Okay. Um, but which proves that there's like, um, I always have a hard time, like a firmware. We have some sort of like a priori reasoning something. or programming that like is probably yeah. almost fundamental to the existence of us as human beings, right? I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I think you can see it with kids whenever they just kind of learn to talk. It's like, okay, they picked up on what I was saying, but how did they learn to say it? Like actually, mm -hmm like say something that's yeah. how i always explain it or okay. even more like fundamental so, to that the idea of like object permanence the idea of thinking that other people yeah. can have unique thoughts these are things that aren't learned or socialized we seem to have some op some like before anything these are granted to us by the like composition of our brain basically right yeah yeah mm -hmm. and so then when it comes to gender mm -hmm. do you think there's it's possible that there's different ways that maybe like a man versus woman. I know, don't come for me, you guys, just to keep it simple. We can go into the other ones in a second, but do you think there's possibly a different way that our firmware kind of learns? 
or the, if there's like a differentiate a differential between them do you understand what i'm trying to get at yeah my I'm not good with words yeah my guess would be is that in a perfectly even world where everybody is treated exactly the same yeah. and there are no differences from one thing to another mm -hmm. you'd probably still see some gender differences that's if for no what other would reason you see though I have no idea. Just like, but like, if for no other reason, like we know that like testosterone has certain effects on the body, um, uh, estrogen mm -hmm. and proestrogen or whatever bullshit, like that stuff has like different effects on the body. So like, if for nothing but else, to be fair, yeah, go ahead. Just to just to be fair, like some can have more in nah, just to keep it, you know, not nah, nah. inclusive. Women like inclusive. women that have more will be up. Like, what is the nanoliter per fucking decigerbal shit? It'll be like it'll like range from like ten to like really really high would be like forty or fifty. I think uh, mm -hmm. would be an ungodly amount of testosterone for a woman. And like the low low mm -hmm. low end for men is like three hundred, and the span is like from three. So like some women might have a little bit higher testosterone, and some men have might have a little bit higher estrogen. But the levels are astronomically different from male to female. They're completely yeah. So aside from hormones, though, mm -hmm. just like because you're speaking in jargon that I uh, nano leaner. Gotcha. Woo, right Stop. Over Listen, my head. you run a I'm YouTube not, channel. Don't I'm act stupid. Smart. That's my one trigger point. OK, for women that I talk to. Huh? You can't don't act dumb. OK, you know what I'm talking about. You know what hormones are, right? I could. I know hormones, but okay. like I want to keep it more um, like if I can't picture it, then I, I would assume a lot of people can't. No offense to the audience. Sure. But okay, like, broadly I, speaking, I don't know men more. have testosterone, women have estrogen. These two hormones not only impact our sure. mood on the day to day, they probably impact like the development of our bodies and our brains by extension of that. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. But, but. I'm got, I want to pull it back to something else. Okay. okay so it when it comes to how, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to run you in a circle. Somebody write down hormones. We're, we can come back You're to okay. it. Yeah. But like men, and let's say men and women have a tendency, and I know you've said this before, they learn a little bit differently. Like women mm -hmm. can kind of sit there and be in class and take in the knowledge. We kind of see that women are better at school because we're more um, biologically biologically hardwired for it. I don't know. Sure. Sorry. And then for men, they kind of like to throw things and more spatial intelligence, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Sure. You think? Do you agree? Um, yeah. Now, for why that is, that's a really interesting and complicated question. Like, um, so yeah. mm -hmm. here's what I think. You can tell me what you think. Okay. Do you believe that? Well, I'll ask you if you believe. Do you think like anything with uh, our ancestors has anything to do with us presently? I don't know how to word it. I'm honestly a dumb bitch. Well, like, stop, don't, don't say that. Stop. It. Okay. I don't know. I can't clarify it if you want to. I can't. I mean, the answer has to be yes. What do you mean? Like our genes and our ancestors? Well, some people. Some people don't think so. There are people that like think. Well, that it's I don't know what you're asking me. Are you asking me like are black people and white people different because of our ancestors, or are you asking me like do genes influence no. our thoughts or like yeah? What are you asking no, me? I'm, no. I'm not at What are you talking? Why did you just make this about race? Well, I don't know. Cause no, wait, it I'm, seems like you're asking me a pretty okay, so common sense question. Like, yeah, our ancestors, fine, of course, fine. influence us, like genetically. Yeah, for sure, of course, right? That the answer can only be yes to that, right? No, that's not true. Oh, okay. Well, if somebody said no to that, so. I would assume they're fucking insane. But oh, okay. Well, I don't know. You give me enough proof, I could probably lean the other way. I just I was asking you so I can move forward. Okay. I'm not asking you to trip you up. I just want. I don't to think sure you're trying to trip me up. You're good. You keep thinking well, that I'm gonna like think you're like trying to fucking trap me or something. I don't think you are. Well, I, I used to be on debate team. Fun okay. fact. But I, like, I'm really not trying. Like every time I say I'm not trying to do something, people think I am. Sure. But I have. I no don't think agenda. you are. I have no. If I thought you were, I'd be screaming a whole lot more and probably calling your name. So okay. You're good. Okay, cool. Thank okay. you. No Thank problem. you. Um, but like, so my dad was recruited for the Cubs baseball baseball team. Okay. He was a pitcher. My brother was also recruited. He didn't end up doing it, obviously. And then I was also a pitcher. So you could see kind of like in our family, we were all kind of really good at one thing. Probably uh -huh. came from dad. Sure. But for a girl... Like, let's say when it came to, sorry guys, if I'm all over the place, like my pitch with a, a baseball, because mm -hmm. girls normally play softball, mm -hmm. but with a baseball, it was, I think, 73 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for a girl last time I checked in like 2013. Okay. But with the softball, I could also pitch it around 68 miles per hour, which is really fast Okay. last time I checked. Gotcha. There's probably people that are better than me now. But um, so 
typically though women would pitch if i remember correctly i know i'm all over the place but okay. i think they would pitch like 62 miles per hour with the softball okay so there's obviously like a component of genetics probably with me For oh sure. my god my dogs um but based on history men typically they say would be the ones to throw the spheres you know what I mean? I think it was both genders, to be honest with you, but just for sake of argument, okay. like men would hunt. And so their ac accuracy okay. would be a lot better than women. Obviously, I gave you my example so that you kind of saw the nuance. I know throwing a sphere and a softball is probably different, but okay. do you understand what I'm saying? Kind of, so I can move I forward. think it sounds like you're taking a really long time to say that like men and women like get things or that people can get things genetically from their family, right? That you have probably some genes in you that are predisposing you towards like throwing things I think quickly. Sure, but yeah. I think the way that men and women operate is gonna be fundamentally different. Cause when we go back to like the firmware, I think that women have a tendency to, and this is just from observation and reading different things but it seems like women process emotions within the moment does it make sense if it doesn't make sense let me know because sure. i yeah, might be saying sense. something wrong no you're good okay i understand what you're saying okay. i don't know if i agree with you but i understand what you're saying sure okay you don't have to agree just be like yeah mm -hmm. you make sense <laughs> can me. i can but, i or actually go ahead no go ahead i was gonna say can i just like lay out my view of this and then you can kind of pick apart or tell me what you disagree with can I let my dogs back in? I thought you just let them back in. They wanted to go out again. <laughs> They're barking at me. Why don't you just leave the, leave the door open? Yeah, because go, then you, you will hear everybody. In okay, go for it. Not Hold on. VRB. Okay? Yeah. I'm coming. Uh, people are saying it's cuxing. I'm not driving any frames on my end. So, and some people are saying it isn't. Some people are saying it isn't. So, I don't know if it's YouTube or what, but I can't do anything about whatever is happening right now. Sorry. There it is, the final frontier. This is fucking painful. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably so loud. Yeah, you're fine, don't worry. Okay, go ahead, I'm listening. What am I going ahead on? You were gonna give me your overall oh, view. Yeah, okay, this is my overall view on men and women, okay? I think that men and women biologically okay because of how biology works we all start with the same parts right nature tends to use and reuse things because it's more energy and developmentally efficient right so like if you look at fetuses i think that they start um i think they start female and then if they have the genetic variation to be more receptive to androgens like testosterone then they kind of like diverge a little bit and they become like more masculine and then if you look at like, like little mutate? what like mutate? Sure, we can say that, sure. If you look at like little boys and little girls, they seem to be pretty similar in terms of like, they're all small, they've got high-pitched voices, they've all got soft skin, but then when the um, puberty starts, that's when you start to see an even wider divergence in secondary sexual characteristics. Men become more rugged, they climb mountains, women wear dresses, there's social things. But like, right, women get boobs, women um, tend to exhibit like different features in terms of body composition, men tend to exhibit different features in terms of body composition, right? Um, so, that, so that's my foundational understanding is we all have the same parts and we're all built from the same pieces. Now, because we're sexed differently, things like hormones, and I'm gonna say mainly hormones, are probably gonna drive differences in early behavior. And because of our genetic differences, we're probably gonna be slightly predisposed towards different types of activities, right? If I had to guess, men are probably a bit more wired for like physicality, for aggression, for competition, and women are probably gonna be more wired in general for things like uh, caretaking, nurturing, um, stuff like that, right? Broadly. No. Okay, I'm just, let me finish my thing, okay? In the most, in the most broad, 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 broad sense is gonna be true. I However, know. in the yeah. sense that this is broadly true, there are two things to consider. One is there's gonna be a lot of overlap, okay? Like if the sensitivity of men is from like five to nine, the sensitivity of women is gonna be like um, three to seven. It'll be something like that. There's gonna be a lot of overlap between us. And two, if there's- I hate a, when you use numbers. Okay. 
And the next B, part B, that was part A, this is part B, okay? Part B okay, yeah. is if there are any differences, we're probably gonna hyper-exaggerate those differences. I think a really good example is the average strength of women, right? That women, when they're socialized, are like supposed to be kind of like weak or whatever. Like that's just kind of how like women are seen. Or there's no. You think that that's socialization? Let me finish, please, please, please. I love you so much, but let me finish. Sorry. Okay. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Women are weaker than men. That is undeniable. Okay. On like yeah. several deviations, but there's no reason okay. for a woman to not be able to put her bag in the overhead compartment in an airplane. That's socialization. Right. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or like, so we can say an example of that might be, and you said you did like pitching or whatever, right? Like women and yeah. men will go to the gym with totally different programs because women think that they like can't build any muscle or whatever. And they just run around and do 52 machines and that's it. Whereas men will like do principles of like, you know, basic building their muscles or whatever. But like if a woman goes to the gym and she trains for strength, she can get like strong enough to like carry her bags. That's all I'm saying, right? So that's like an example of like a thing that is a real really biological- sexist. True. It's a small I'm biological kidding. difference, right? No, no, I'm sorry. It's like a medium sized to large biological difference, but we drive that difference even wider because of how we socialize ourselves. And I think that most of the big differences between men and women start off as small biological differences. And then I think we drive those really far apart socially. That, so that's my right. broad feeling on things. So for some things, we can bring those back in alignment. For instance, like men can learn to have emotionally fulfilling relationships and good satisfying conversations where they have some level of emotional intelligence and women can be competitive and do sports like this happens. But like, yeah, it just depends a lot on the socialization. Okay, that's my broad feeling you, about that. You, you've said this before about men and emotions mm -hmm. and can you clarify for me? Like it seems like, and I, how do I word it? It's like, what makes you think that the way that you think men should process emotions is the right way? Because men are killing themselves at huge rates because men seem like sure. when they communicate to each other, it's borderline autism. Um, and then when I see the differences between men and women engagement with the opposite sex on things like Tinder or Grindr, um, men seem to genuinely just have no fucking concept of like what other people are thinking about them or like how to communicate in an appropriate manner. And that but kind of what? Talk about, yeah. But what if I told you that you're the minority that says that? Like, what makes you right with that? That's what I'm asking. Um, I guess at this point, we're kind of roughly appealing to anecdote and like social norms. I no, guess I could be no. wrong. What? I don't so know. If there, I don't know if I can you... find ever come up with a study on like conversation quality differences between men and women. Fuck the yeah. stats. I'm not. Sure. Fuck the stats. Well, then all like, I can appeal to are like the things that. that I see people say, the social norms that I see, the way that people like communicate with each other, the personal experiences I have with people. So, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I hear you give experiences, it's usually like a woman saying it to you. Have you had guys say anything to you like, hey, like I, I don't feel like I can express myself? No, because they like usually that. are too retarded to even have the notion that they're lacking something. Okay, do yeah. you have, like, can you watch the language? Sorry. Men are she too is. emotionally stunted to even realize there's a problem. Oftentimes seems to be the but case. But why do you, what makes you think that like, that's true? Like, the, the, I, I'm really not trying to appeal to anybody, but it's always so interesting to me that like the majority of men feel a certain way. They do a certain thing and that's the majority. But what you're saying is that's wrong. And I'm asking you, is it wrong because women come to you and say like, this is, I can't connect with them. Like they're not uh, emotionally available. Is it just women that do that? Because that would make a lot of sense to me why they do that. So I look at, broadly speaking, I look at the different ways that men and women communicate with their friends. And I think that it is, mm -hmm. I don't think many people disagree that women are much better at forming deep, personal, emotionally fulfilling friendships with each other. Uh, and, I, and I think that men have a really hard time with that because of the way that we communicate who do you with think, each other. Who do you think holds on to friends longer, men or women? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I would honestly say men. Like, I'm not trying to set you up, but I think men hold on to their friends longer than women do. Yeah, but I don't know if that question is meaningful. So, for instance, so like, the, what, what, real quick, like, I have, I have a friend. I've got a lot of friends that I've held on to for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, one of my personal friends growing up is Kyle. I've held on to him for a long time. I haven't talked to him in three years. But, like, I know if I were to message him, we'd be, like, chilling. We could go, like, hang out. But, like, is that, yeah. like, an emotionally fulfilling friendship? Probably not. But, like, he's, I mean, yeah. he is, yeah. So uh, I guess that's a that's one example, but I think men that have their same friends throughout childhood, like from my experience, and obviously we're talking anecdotes, but like I think that they do have fulfilling relationships. They're just different. Sure, but I mean, you know like if I'm they're saying? different in terms of like less fulfilling, then does it matter if they last longer? 
But how do you know it's not fulfilling to them? Sure, because when you I know look at saying? the yeah, I mean, we dive into the phone. When I look at the different styles of communication between men and women, it seems like women are way more open to share their feelings about particular events and to have conversations and get feedback from their friends about it. Versus men tend to stay way more locked up with things. Um, I think a really but good example of this think... might be talking about like I want to give an example for thing I say so that it doesn't sound nebulous. Okay, okay. Go ahead. I think a really good yeah. example is how we talk about our relationships. I think it's genuinely, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, I think it's generally pretty rare that men talk about their like. Um, their romantic relationships with their fellow friends, whereas for women, it is exceedingly common for them to share a ton about their romantic relationships. Maybe because we're different. Sure, yeah. but in that case, I would say, first of all, there's no reason why a man can't do that. I don't think you're hardwired not to have those conversations. And secondly, if we are different in that sense, okay. I'd say women are better in that sense. That's a, that's just a better thing, I think. I just don't think it, it's a matter of better or not better. I just think it's a matter of difference. Well, do you think different sense. things can be better or worse? I think different things can be different and still be good in their context. What would be what would be the I'd, positive here? Sell me this on the male friendship model. Okay, sure, fine. Yeah. Um, like, so it seems to me that like your friendships, well, correct me if I'm wrong, like your friendships with guys tend to be more meaningful and meaningful to you has is like more um in depth i guess is what you said like women have a tendency to be more uh deep did i get that right yeah that women tend to oh, yeah. have a lot more like emotional exploration i guess in, in friendships and okay. they're, they're like more open and sharing and everything yeah is it possible that men typically aren't that way don't have emotions or what do you mean no they do so like there's this whole thing that like people whenever people talk about male emotions they're always like men can't cry or something i'm like okay first of all men have a tendency to lean more towards anger and being able to process anger is equivalent to women and crying i would say whether you think that's true or not you can come to your own conclusion whatever but like men just ha are more so uh they process and then they either get mad about something or upset but with women and i know i'm tangential right now try to follow me with mm -hmm. women we process things uh as we go so like be like this bitch at work fucking bethany she was saying this but hold on and like we kind of go all over the place and so we process it in a little bit different way guys will process and then they'll tell it and so maybe by the time a guy tells it there's not really that much to go off of but like let's but say it mean that it's not valuable well let's say that i grant you all of that let's say that i say everything that you've mm -hmm. just said is true um what sounds better somebody that processes everything completely on their own before sharing it with somebody or somebody that mm -hmm. solicits the feedback of friends to, with help like sorting through things sure um, I do think that men um, would, I, I, I agree with you when we talk about like men should talk about things with their friends. I agree with you on that. But I think that it's possible that it might be healthier to process it yourself first for women too. Women shouldn't be telling their friends all this shit. But it's a burden on us too. It's a burden on a lot of people because we don't, when, whenever women talk, and I'll say from my own experience, it's like they're they're still processing it. So they don't know if they want to do A or B. Let's say they don't know if they should go to HR or not. They never should. But like, let's say that was their dilemma. And then the friend will be like, well, you should do A. But have you ever been around women that are like, oh, but should I do B? And then they go back and forth a lot. And then the other person's just kind of stuck there. Like, I don't know what you should do. I'm just going to tell you either or. And you just try to end the conversation. I think that's a lot of women. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm throwing down. Yeah, I mean, some like people suck of, at, some people are just are fucking annoying to talk to. Like, I don't disagree with that. But I think as a general rule of thumb, talking about problems that you have with your friends to get help on like sorting through those. I mean, we're humans are built as incredibly social creatures. I think that's probably going to be better than bottling it all up and dealing with it on your own. Now, obviously there can be obnoxious forms of communication where you're complaining about every little problem or you complain about the same problem over and over and over and over again. You don't actually implement any solutions, but broadly speaking, I think it's probably healthier to have a communication style that involves getting feedback from friends and family. Yeah, probably. But I don't think that men need to fundamentally like change the way they process. That would be like changing firmware. 
and the way that they remember I was talking yeah, about but Stephen again, Pinker. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but this is going to be the thing where I said I don't think this is a firmware thing. I think this is a heavy socialization thing. It's hard for Why? me to believe because it's hard for me to believe that a man couldn't just like share an emotion with somebody. I think a man can do that. I don't think there's anything that is like super hardwired into us that makes it impossible for us to do that. I don't buy that. Do you think they want to though? I think they don't like, know they uh, want I'd to, say, right? They don't know they want to. Okay. Like Got if you it. ask a heroin user what they want, they're gonna say more heroin, right? <laughs> they're not gonna say they want to get yeah. clean. They're yeah. gonna say give me more heroin, right? So like if you want to ever also, this is just like shit my chat links me, so I'm never trying to like ambush you with um, anything because yeah. I, I don't know like um, in terms of like all the data and all the stats or whatever. Um, somebody in my chat threw this at me. I'm gonna link you this in uh, Twitter DMs. Here you go. You can just say it. I, sure. I believe you. Um, so this was like, um, it was, I guess this was a survey on who is more likely uh, to receive emotional support from friends. So the first question was received emotion. Before you even go there. Go ahead. Before you even go there, though. Mm -hmm. What if men process something and don't think there's a problem? But they, I'm going to appeal to anecdote here. That's not the case, right? The average well, guy so that you I'll meet. Like, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the average guy you meet is not like some like really well put together. Like you're talking to me, like, yeah, I had these issues and, you know, I did a lot of self-reflection and I think I've like really handled it. I don't think that's like the average that, person. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying, though, is women on average... I, I don't know the exact number, but women are more likely to seek treatment than men are. And a lot of times men, when it comes to mental health, and this is like my area of expertise, like this is like when it comes to um, psychotic disorders, it's like a lot of times, even with something like, let's say bipolar disorder that doesn't always have psychotic features, uh -huh. a lot of times they suffer from anosognosia, which is lack of insight. Okay. So a lot of times men, because they have a higher, um, what's the higher probability that they'll have a mental health condition that falls into like a mood disorder or a psychotic disorder, means that they'll have a higher instances, a higher instance of lack of insight so it's like maybe they don't even know or maybe the ones that do know are like, oh, it's not that bad. And then they don't seek treatment. I always say like when it comes to uh, suicide, the number one symptom of or I'm sorry, the number one thing that will indicate suicide or whatever is depression. So like, yeah, go seek treatment. A lot of times we socialize men to not seek treatment because that means they're weak. Right. I'm trying to appeal to you right now because it's kind of like that's that's what you would agree with. Right. Like most. Men yeah, I feel don't. like everything you just said, I feel like I agree with pretty hardcore. Yeah. OK, so like what if men get to a point where they don't think that they're or I'm sorry, what if they get to a point where they're like maybe my problems are too overwhelming and it's too much of a burden because I haven't really noticed it until now. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that might be the case, really... but I feel like you're making my argument for me or does this go back to you somehow? No, I, I am. I am because okay. I, yeah, I agree with it. you on some stuff. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I kind of give the nuance or whatever gotcha. to be more specific. Okay. But um, so it's like, yeah, men might get to a point where they don't realize there's a problem. And I do agree that we should help men recognize a problem or when it gets too overwhelming. But overall, when it comes to processing information, I don't think that we say, or I don't think that men by and large do it wrong. Like I do think there is something innate to say about it. I do think we tell boys not to hit and that's probably an issue. And that's the socialization that you were talking about. And men express their uh, neglect or, um, cause like anger is not, or aggression isn't an emotion, but it's a behavior based yeah. on and an emotion. And we don't emotion. teach people how to work through anger very well. We usually just tell yeah. people not to be angry, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but again, I, I guess like, I, if you want to dive into this, like I would argue in favor of the woman style of communicating here is is not different. It, well, it is different, but it's just better. It's superior here. Like it's when I say superior, I mean it's going to produce better outcomes, and the self-reported happiness levels of the people involved are also going to be higher. Like it's just going to be a better way but of doing things. I th I think that's like we're raising men as defective girls. Why are we telling them to do things a certain way that maybe they innately? don't follow because I don't think like, that being I able to have a conversation about your emotions makes you a girl I think the fact that anybody would even think that's a girl thing is is incredibly no, problematic that's not what I'm saying that's not what well, I'm I don't saying think I don't think you adult. have to be socialized like a girl to be able to have like emotional conversations with somebody I think that that's something that a man can handle doing 
I think they handle it very well. But actually. they don't because they're not doing it. <laughs> Why do you say that though? Like when it comes to like men, in, like let's well, say yeah, sure. This was the this was the thing that I shot you on Twitter. So yeah. for people that are more yeah, likely to receive emotional support from friends, right? So twenty percent of men said that they received emotional support from a friend in the past week. That was forty percent for women. Twenty five percent of men said they told a friend they loved them. That was fifty percent of women, or forty eight percent of women. Um, thirty percent of men said they had a private conversation. You're about to prove my point, but go okay. ahead. Okay, thirty percent of men said they had a private conversation in which they shared personal feelings or problems. That number was forty-six percent for women. Like these mm -hmm. seem like things that are all just like good things to do. And if men aren't doing, who them, did that study? What What's the? Um, I know you sent it to me. Yeah, it seems like it was done from the Survey Center on American Life. Uh, sample size okay. was 2019. Um, it was an American Perspective survey published in oh, May recent. 2021. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it's possible that men live lonelier lives than women? I think so, yeah. I think that's almost absolutely true, yeah. Why do you think that is, in your opinion? I think that we've been trained very, very, very poorly at socialization, and we have a really hard time adapting to the new world that requires uh, better and more sophisticated understandings of how to socialize than it did in the past. I would make the argument that you mm -hmm. probably have a lot more girlfriends than an average dude. I think you understand women a lot better than maybe even women understand themselves. But I wouldn't say that you are your typical male by yeah, and large. Yeah, but I also, I, to be clear, to be ultra clear, I don't advocate for anybody doing anything, anything at all that I do. I think I'm an outlier in a lot of different ways, so I don't advocate for any of my lifestyle or any of the shit. I'm just talking. You whenever. have been this entire time. Absolutely not. I have very few personal friends, yes, and I don't you talk have. to. I don't talk to. You've been no, saying no, 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 that no, no, women no, no, are the no, right no, no, way. No, 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 no. Hold on. I no. I don't, this is not how I resolve any of my stuff. I don't talk to anybody about my problems. I don't share any of that shit because that's how I personally do things. None of the prescriptions that I'm giving you have anything to do with my personal life. I live a very atypical- Hold on, hold on. I'm not talking about that. Hold on, you're, no, no, wait, wait. That's exactly you, what you said. You just said that no, like, I'm advocating for things. I'm doing, no. no, no, wait, I'm not advocating for anything. You're gonna I, get mad. Okay, go for it. You're gonna get mad. You're gonna get mad. Cause go I'm ahead. not, I'm genuinely not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you said that women do it the right way. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm basing that yeah. not on my lifestyle or my life or anything. I'm just basing that on like research and like well understood tenets of like psychology and like basic like fundamental like human interaction. That like talking to more people, having more friends, sharing emotions with each other, broadly speaking, non controversially, this is going to be a good thing. Yeah. Like it's going to increase like our Do longevity, like our mental health, like our probably our physical health and like everything, right? Probably. So if you can do, do more of these things, it's going to be better. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I know, I know what you're getting at, but do you, do you think that men are disenfranchised right now? I know it's probably like that's such a broad mm -hmm. question. It's like almost meaningless. I, I'm okay, sure in some ways think, men are. I'm sure in some ways women are. Like, yeah. Do you think that men are viewed well in society in the West right now? Do you, or do you think they're viewed as either like pedophiles? Um, I think in general, I think men are viewed Stupid. well. There's going to be like places on Twitter, some places in like pop culture, some celebrities that say dumb shit. But I think broadly speaking, I think men are in a pretty good spot. I have to be honest with you. I really don't use Twitter. So I, I know there's like a whole thing where you can look at threads and shit. I really don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I know Twitter was groundbreaking for shit and I just don't know it. So sure. for the sake of whatever. But do you think that men, I would say that men, in my opinion, are viewed really poorly right now. I don't think, I think it's almost a joke. Well, I guess I the question is gonna be, when you say viewed poorly, what does that mean, I guess? That's the question. Like overall, like do you think women are happy with men? It's. I would say probably not. It's like such a broad question, I don't know how to. I, I'm not trying to pin you down. Like, no, I understand, it's just, but like the question is like so broad that I don't know, like in terms of like. Then do... rephrase it. Like, Rephrase I it. think that socially, there's some dumb stuff that happens right now where men are demonized or over demonized for a lot of things. But when you say, like, are men taken serious in society, like a male police officer, a male CEO, like a male businessman, a guy with money, a guy that looks really good, a guy giving commands in a social situation, like, all of these men mm -hmm. are going to be looked up to and respected. Like, nobody's going to, like, okay. say that, like, oh my God, like, my CEO is so bad because he's a man. Like, nobody's saying that, right? Yeah. Um, whereas some people might mm -hmm. say, like, oh, that's, you know, that's a woman. I don't know if she can lead as well. Like, I don't know. Women are leaders, right? So, but, but, like, if we go to, like, social media or pop culture, you know, people shit on men relentlessly mm -hmm. and that's going to affect like young boys or young men that haven't stepped out into the real world yet that are still like in college or high school they're going to have really negative views of themselves probably because of the messages they receive so in some ways yeah men are probably like mm -hmm. shit on a lot obviously i see it and i fight against that every day because it's so fucking stupid but in other ways like men are doing fine like in the adult world like they're not being like attacked or all castigated as pedophiles or anything yeah. so then like what's the average age of suicide for a man 
If you know, I don't fucking know. Um, my guess is going to be like 30. Kids. Yeah, so did I. But I think the average age is probably like 35 or 40 or something. So do you still agree with what you were saying before? Because um, you were saying that it was young boys that are going to grow up to see all this and kind of uh, take it on. Wait, Let, no, 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 but I don't think that I don't think that. I don't think that if suicide. Wait, wait. I don't think that suicide that, is an accurate tracker for who's seen as good or bad in society. That doesn't make any sense. Because if that was, if I was using suicide as a tracker, there, I would say that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. I'm saying like, if it they're if they're committing suicide, my dogs. I swear to God, if they're committing suicide, you could make the argument that their life is harder. Let's say. No, I don't think that's. I'm true. not. I'm not. I'm not saying it like that. But I'm. I'm saying it because you were saying before. Now I'm going to get distracted again, but you were saying that I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. Sorry. In terms Fill of who is like attacked more by society or. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But that's also like a, an iffy subject. I'm sure people would. You could make the argument for either. But I think like the suicide stats kind of like the fact that men commit it more we could say it's either because they're not socialized like you were saying earlier to seek treatment to um or they don't have enough friends to talk about it but then you could also say maybe women don't have that hard of a life you can make that argument too like it's kind of nobody really knows I uh, no i would i i would have to dig into why that happens I'm, i would never say it's because well, they have a harder life right because um like, no i'm yeah. saying you can make the argument for multiple things well no what i what i would ask is is um, what I would ask is, is I would say, well, what are the reasons? What are the biggest risk factors for suicide? And then that would give some yeah. indication. So I just, I Googled this and I come across late life suicide. Probably it, lonely. Yeah, loneliness. but if it's loneliness, which it is, risk factors for suicide in older adults include the, the loss of a loved one, loneliness, and physical illness. So if that's the case, then it seems like now we're getting an even stronger argument for men's methods of socialization is bad. Yeah. yeah. But let, like, what if, is it possible that maybe what's keeping them lonely is a society telling them they have to do things a girl's way and they just can't no they can't i think so okay. that's where i think it i think like a large thing is like we're pushing this female centric message and it's possible that men just can't adapt to it maybe they're just not fundamentally hardwired for that sure over time you can like try to socialize them and hopefully that passes down but that's going to be a long time but i think it's possible that the reason that they commit suicide at higher rates and you can look at the stats i would say it probably started around the 60s and it's been continuously either leveled out or going up maybe for social media i don't know it could be multiple factors but is it possible that like maybe the message we're pushing is that women do things the right way. And it's actually not this patriarchy that we've been pushing. I'm not saying you have to agree with me. I'm just saying, is it possible? That it, that's like an interesting so, hypothesis. So I, it's possible, but I would need like some, I'd need something to back all, that up, right? All I ask is maybe you look into that. Well, I have, I'm and, I've, and I've never found data that supports that ever. There's not a single anything that supports that. Like telling men to have better conversations and more emotionally fulfilling relationships is leading them to kill themselves more. I mean, my understanding is there's no source I of data. I didn't say that. that. You know I didn't say that. Well, but when you say like socialize don't, like don't women. Say that. Well, but yeah, when you I say social. I think you're going. Well, I you think you're going super high, like fast right now and yeah. like super quick and you're taking things from prior things and adding it. And what I'm asking you is literally like the thing I said before. Well, what do you mean when you do say, you are men killing themselves more because they're being asked to live in a gynocentric world? Can you expand on that for me? What do you mean by that? So, so I'm saying like, is it possible that the, the messages that we push are female ways of doing things and that maybe men can't adapt to it because fundamentally Yeah, I understand that part, but what is the messages? What are you talking about there? So like, let's say love me at any size. We say that for women, but we don't say that about men. We don't, but you men have I mean? always you... been loved at every size. So it's a fundamentally- No, that, that, that's not true. That is the, absolutely I remember true. you brought that up earlier when you were saying like the thing about beauty and looks, but I've never seen a dad calendar where it's like of chubbier men. I've never First seen of all, that. Women, I've only seen chiseled. If you look at, if we look at the difference in, this is just, 
True, unless you're, th- you have to you, acknowledge. Go ahead, ask if, me. Yeah, if I'll we look at like, if we look at the types of actors versus actresses cast in movies and TV shows yeah. and everything in culture and singers and everything, and we go back 30, 40, 50 years, there's plenty of like big dudes that like it jokingly called sexy and they have careers and it's cool and it's not all about them being fat or whatever. For women, Fine. there is a very narrow mold, although that's expanded recently in the past like 10, 15 years, but for the large part of our history, there's a very narrow mold that a woman has to look like a certain thing. Are directors predominantly men or women? Probably men. It's men. I don't know the exact percentage, but it is men. Is it possible that we're appealing to things that women say? Like women will be like, I I want a guy that's a little chunkier, right? I just don't think that the- You're you're not gonna follow where I'm going with it, so- Okay, I just, I I don't think that women like rate as harshly on appearance as I think men do. I think that's why men can occupy a larger space, larger window. Fifty Shades of Grey. What about it? You know the book? Have you ever read it? <laughs> I've heard about it. But... Okay, it's like this fantasized. I know. I know what it. I know fan- what it is. I know what Fifty Shades okay, of Grey. Okay, I just haven't okay, read the book. Okay, but go ahead. Okay. You don't have to give me a play by play. Well, it's. I won't give you a play by play, but like the guy in it is this billionaire mm-hmm. that is ripped and shit, and it's like women fantasize. By reading that book it was like i forget how many copies were sold but it was like one of the biggest uh f- I, is it fan fiction yeah because i i don't think it's really i don't think you're gonna find that guy on the street you know but uh-huh. um that was such a a big um it got so many copies it wasn't even published by an actual publisher it was self published or something yeah she originally started off like, writing a twilight fanfic and then it grew into that i think yeah 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 so it's like um <clears throat> That coupled with uh, there's certain studies where I don't know for sure. I don't always like to pull studies. I can't remember off the top of my head just for sake of not putting out false information. But there was something around the thing that like you could determine how many women a guy slept with based on how muscular he was. So the more muscular, the more women he slept with. Okay. So when you cu- so a lot of times I've noticed this with my girlfriends, this is anecdote, but like that they will say they want one thing and go for like the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happens more often than it does. And this is just my friend group. But a lot of times I think women will say they prefer something and it might be that bro, mom's trying to finish an argument. <laughs> my dog, come here, baby. Um, a lot of times women will say one thing but they actually go for something completely different. And I think a lot of times we, in terms of media and culture, we will push a message for men to be more dad bodish. I'm trying to speak in terms of like what men look like. I don't think but, we push that. I think we always push for men to be like pretty ripped. Like that's the push, but we just, even though we push for that, we seem to have a broader space that men can occupy, right? Like historically, they've just you been just, like- yeah. You just proved my point then. How do you think I've proved your point? Go backwards. That you think in society we've yeah. pushed in that s- men should. Yeah, when should you're looking at like advertisements, the- like men want to all be shredded and stuff. Yeah. They advertise as shredded men, but regardless of that, socially speaking, men can occupy a broader range of body types. Men don't need health at every size because they've already been viewed as healthy at every size, right? Say like- that to a fat guy, Destiny. Sure, look at Drew Carey. Seriously. There's people that think that Drew Carey was worse <gasps> for losing weight. <laughs> Is that a celebrity? Come on. Wait, like, on wait, average. Yes, look at people like Seth Rogen. There's t- look at I Jonah have, Hill. There are lots of, like, fat dudes that people love. I think Jonah Hill lost weight. Have status. Have status. Sure, they but I'm status. saying that even with status, as a female actress, being fat is, like... That's almost it. Now it's changing a little bit, but traditionally, all women were like twenty, well, like seventeen to like twenty-two year old, like size zero, like fucking models. Like that was like a, there was a very narrow space that women could occupy. I think, okay, with OnlyFans coming out now, I'm not, I'm not totally moving, but it feels like that. Like OnlyFans, I would be curious to see the body types that men go for on OnlyFans now that there's not this whole uh, production company, like how porn industries were, you know how like they would kind of push a specific image. OnlyFans, this is like studies I wanna see come out. I don't have the answer to it, but I think that men typically can fetishize anything. 
So I don't actually think that there's this beauty standard created by men. I think it's created by other women competing with each other. You know what I'm saying? I just, I you totally don't have to disagree. Agree I don't with think it. women are getting like Brazilian think... butt lifts and like lip injections for other women. Like, do you, is it possible that maybe they watch what guys like on Instagram and maybe that's what they think men want? Yes. But they're not actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I agree with you because I've, I've fall into sure. that trap before. I will say though, men... I think that like it's, it's hard to know this. I, I don't know what the research mm -hmm. says on this, but what you mentioned about women saying they want one thing, but they'll go for a whole other thing. Um, it mm -hmm. feels like that um, is in a way it harkens back to a point that I said earlier about how like women might rate appearance more harshly on dating apps than sure. men do. But it might be that appearance just isn't a thing on that women apps? care. Yeah, that that uh, um, women might not um, care as much about like appearance versus other qualities when it comes to selecting a partner. So even if women will say things like, oh, yeah, I think I'd prefer to be mm -hmm. a guy that's like six feet tall. or I think I'd prefer to be a guy like this. If she meets the right dude that like makes her feel good, she'll be like, fuck everything I just said. Whereas it feels like this yeah. again, these are feelings but it feels like men can be a bit more selective about that. Like, And maybe you know this, and I just haven't met women that are like this, but I feel like I hear more often from men who say things like, I really want to be with a Latina chick. I really want a fucking Asian girl. Like that that type mm -hmm. of like more narrow like band of preference or like even you'll see like these, no offense, but like these really fat like neck bearded guys on the internet will be like making fun of like other women that are overweight. Um, it feels like yeah. men have a bit more of a narrow band in terms of what's acceptable to look like as a woman versus women might say a thing, but their band is a bit wider. That's what it feels like or a lot wider. I, like, I think a lot of times like like I feel like I hear a lot of people just as one example on the internet I feel like I would have heard a lot yeah, of women say things because I watched a lot of like stoner comedies and shit growing up that like people like Seth Rogen like he's like a fat sexy dude he's cool he's sexy I love that guy right I don't know of any man that would have ever said anything like that about the um, uh, about like fucking fucking Roseanne or um or uh, what's the name of that one there's that overweight woman that's like in everything I, I know Melissa McCarthy Melissa too. McCarthy yeah I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like guys don't say I, that I about. Know yeah. Roseanne. Generally speaking, or Amy Schumer, or whatever. Like generally speaking, these people. Sh Amy Schumer. I don't even know if she's obese, but like these people get a ton of shit about their weight. Whereas like there was never an outcry about like, oh my god, Jonah Hill is so fat. Seth Rogen sure. is so fat. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. So I I hear you. Mm -hmm. I just I think that like if you want to talk about dating apps, I know you mentioned that dating mm -hmm. apps. I know for a fact that if you are. 510 your matches skyrocket or i'm sorry nosedive to the fucking bottom i would google it but it's like height men can't change their height right they're born with it but women can change their weight you know what i mean and so like pushing the whole weight thing to be healthy is not healthy and i know people are going to be like I know like when people don't actually care about health and they'll push that whole argument. It's like, no, you're actually just being fat phobic. Sure, listen, literally no one that. here like, is saying that you're not getting any bravery points for shitting on fat people. We all agree with you, okay? Um, <laughs> like, okay, the, um, I just, I've seen different people like argue it. And I'm like, you literally don't care about the, this person's health. So it's just like annoying. Sure, but I mean, the people that for, fat shame them also don't care about the person's health either. They're usually just trying to win dunks on the internet. They're just, they're just shitty. People shitty. just like to shit yeah. on people on the internet. Nobody actually gives a fuck yeah. about anybody's health. That's why when you see like images of like overweight people like doing yoga and shit, like everybody's shitting on them too online. Like it happens. Um, but really? I, yes, there was that I, recent, there, um, it was a, uh, was it I Nike or was it. it somebody else where there was a woman doing some yoga pose with the splits, but she was clearly obese, but like everybody was shitting on that particular thing, even though it was like a fat person like exercising in an ad, which seems good. But. Oh, that makes me sad. Cause I would hope that if like fat people are in the gym, people are nice to them. Sure. Yeah. Was it a Gatorade commercial? I don't know what it was, but regardless. I believe you. I just, I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I agree that maybe women it sounds like, um, see the height thing is what always gets me though. It's like if a guy didn't have status, I don't know any woman that would date a guy below their height. Below their height, sure. But you have to be careful because earlier you said 5'10". I think that like- So that on the dating apps, it'll go down. Like, I don't think, but on a lot of dating apps, you don't even list your height, right? <laughs> like Tinder, you don't have to put your so, height on Tinder. Right, but let's say you met. Should they lie or like if they meet? You should in person, because girls don't I, care. Know? Girls don't care if you're six feet tall. I think in general, like as long I as I agree with you on yeah, that. Yeah, in general, as long as you're like, as long as you're like five seven and above, you're probably okay. But once you hit like below five seven, you're gonna have 
big problems. Not to knock any guys, but like if you're like a 5'3 or 5'4 guy, now your height is like a significant roadblock to like dating people. But if you're like 5'9 and you think the reason why you're not getting girls because your height, you're ca capping like super hard. There's some other creepy yeah. weird shit you're doing 100%. But like I don't, I doubt there's, totally. there's, yeah, there's never been a guy. And the, on, the only exception to this is going to be women that are tall. Because like if you're a woman and you're like 5'9 or 5'10, some of those women don't ever want to be with a shorter guy, especially if they go out in heels. What's the average, right? average what's height for a woman is five four for guys five, i think six? it's is it five six is it i thought it was more than five four you might be right five yeah, yeah. You're women right. is five four five, i think four. man is five nine so like if you got like a five four woman and you're like five seven five eight you're probably fine but if you're but again when you hit like below like five if eight below you five have seven other things going for you though i don't think alone on height like if you're a broke dude yeah but on. nobody's making it men are not making it alone on height being like 5 8, 11 doesn't guarantee you're gonna lay somebody or like being six feet tall doesn't guarantee you're gonna fuck somebody right <laughs> i think i i actually would disagree and think height could probably if you're really good at lying, which you know. well, sure, but now you're saying right. If there's a, with a conjunction of other factors, <laughs> there's other things. yeah, a man's like, never like, fucking hey, just I because think. he's six feet tall. Like a woman might fuck because she's a woman and she's cute, but a guy's not fucking just because he's six feet tall. There's no shot. You'd be surprised. That I might disagree with you on. I think women are fucking dudes just because they're tall, and they might think that they have money. That might be added to it, but the guy might actually not have money. He's going to have to do, I like, think. the bare bones, like, fucking, like, hygiene and, like, looks decent or whatever. But, like, there's a lot of, like, tall cells out there that are Big just, like, dick. tall, creepy, Big weird dick. dudes. I I, dick. I don't think. I don't think so. I don't even know how correlated that is. Like, if a six-foot guy on average has, either, like, an eight-inch like, dick or something, think, I don't think that's... But women, but, but women think it's correlated. You don't think so? I have Come no idea, on. actually. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe they do. Our whole firmware is trying to figure out if this guy is the real deal or not. Yeah, whether but like the most populated they're... people on the planet are Asians who aren't known for having huge dicks. So like, what is the firmware doing exactly. there? Exactly. <laughs> right? and, they, and they don't they they don't get as many dates. They're but they but they're the populating matched. the whole fucking planet, right? How many Asian people are there compared to fucking white people? What? Wait, what? How many fucking you, people are in fucking China? How many Chinese people are there, right? It doesn't seem like they're selecting for huge dicks, no? Um, okay, fine. But like how many people are in the US compared to fucking China, Destiny? Like, I don't know. Probably more. Aren't they more populated? <laughs> wait. Like, that's just like, there's wait, more wait, of wait, them. Wait, 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 hold on. What are you talking about? There's more of who? I'm not the wait, clear that up. Asians. You were saying Asians. Yeah, there's more people in China than in the United States, right? Right. I agree with you. Yeah. So, but I was just making the argument that, like, the idea that they're very lonely. They're not <laughs> coupling up with people. Like, what? They're the most single. I don't. I'm dead wait, ass. hold on. Asians? You can't generalize Asians, right? No. Like, they're they're liter. I'm not generalizing Asians and saying that they're not sexy. They're sexy. No, I'm no, no, no. I'm not that, talking like, about some. I'm just saying that like Asians doesn't mean much, right? Asians includes like South Koreans, fucking people from Singapore, people from fucking India, yeah. like Japanese people, yeah. South Korean people. Yeah, there's gonna be yeah, different like more dating. Of them. No. Okay. <laughs> That's where. I'm sorry. I don't understand it. Go ahead. I'm just saying you wouldn't make you wouldn't make a statement about Asians the same way you wouldn't make a statement about like Americans and group in like Canadians, Mexicans, and people from the United States, right? You'd treat these as three right. distinct groups of people, right? So but we, you said China. Well, because, That's where you lost me. Because, I thought you were just talking about China. Yeah, but China is not all of Asia, right? Right. But you were saying just China earlier, and China's bigger, isn't it? Maybe it's not. I don't know a map. China is not bigger than Asia. I promise you that. No, I thought China is bigger than the U.S. Is it not? It is, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. I like re. I started to read a map this year, so I'm like, I was positive, and then then you started adding in the other stuff. But like, yeah. But I thought we were talking about China and the U.S. Okay, to recenter way <laughs> back on where we were. Okay, all I, you were mentioning the fact that like, oh well, women. I think we talked about enough. I think it's good. <laughs> okay. Then I'm tired. If you're yeah, I have okay. to go on on Alex's. Show. Oh, I'm late. Uh oh, Ooh. be careful. All right. Well. Sorry, Alex. Do Anyways, I was late here because of nice Alex talking, talking to me, to so that's fine. You know, he fucked over both of us, I guess. So. Oh, he did. Yeah. It was his fault. Yeah, there you go. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk about these conversations. Yeah, hopefully, thanks a lot. I didn't piss you off too much. I was really not trying to make you mad. Nope, you're good. No problemo. Okay. Alrighty, have a good one. All right, have fun. Bye. Bye. Okay, that.
I'm gonna be totally honest. I saw the picture she had on Twitter, and it was a silhouetted picture, and she mentioned the red pill stuff I was on, and I thought it was a black woman that was coming to talk about like um, those black men, black women issues. I I just made that assumption. That was dumb. I don't know why I did that. But the picture on her thing is not a black woman. It's just a silhouetted white woman. I was just my I was not ready for that. <laughs> okay.